Hello friends, welcome to my lecture on LoRa series. Uh, in various applications, it is necessary to expand a function fz around points where fz is singular, meaning that fz is not analytic. Now, Taylor's theorem cannot be applied in such cases because in the Taylor's theorem we need the function uh, to be analytic in a neighborhood of that point. Now, Laura series is named after the French engineer and mathematician Pere Alphonse Laura uh, and uh, the theorem goes like this. If fz is analytic on two concentric circles C1 and C2 with center Z0 and in the annulus between them then fz can be represented by the Laura series fz equal to sigma n equal to 0 to infinity b n z minus z0 to the power n plus sigma n equal to 1 to infinity c n over z minus z0 to the power n. Now, we can uh, where the values of b n and c n are given by uh, the integrals b n equal to 1 over 2 pi i integral over c f w over uh, w minus z0 to the power n plus 1 dw n varies from 0 and uh, takes values 1, 2, 3 and so on. So, n is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on and c n is equal to 1 over 2 pi i integral over c f w dw over w minus z0 to the power minus n plus 1. We can also write this c n as equal to 1 over 2 pi i uh, integral over c w minus z0 to the power n minus 1 f w d w. So, we can also write C n like this. Now, each integral in B n and C n is being taken in the counterclockwise sense around any simple closed curve C which lies in the annulus and encircles the inner circle. We can see the figure this one. Okay. Here you can see there are two circles C 1 and C 2 concentric circles with center at this is not A, this is Z naught. So, uh, the two circles C 1 and C 2 which are concentric with center at Z naught uh, are given and the, the function the shaded region means the function is analytic in this area in this uh, shaded portion which is the annular region between C 1 and C 2 and C is any simple closed curve which lies in the annulus and encircles the inner circle. So, the series 1 then converges the LoRa series 1 then converges and uh, represents fz in the open annulus obtained from the given annulus. So, the series then converges and represents fz in the open annulus obtained by increasing the radius of C1 and decreasing the radius of C2 till we reach a singular point or we reach a point where the function is not analytic. So, that is the region of convergence of the LoRa series. Now, uh, let us see how we prove this uh, theorem. We can, we can write the uh, series 1 in an alternate form. This series 1 can be written in an alternate form uh, like this b f z equal to sigma n equal to minus infinity to infinity b n z minus z naught to the power n. If you notice that uh, uh, c n here, c n is, uh, is nothing but b minus n. Okay? You can see C n, the, uh, you can see the expression of C n and the expression of B n. Okay? So, when you replace n by minus n in B n, you get C n. Okay? So, C n is equal to B minus n when n takes values 1, 2, 3 and so on. Okay? So, uh, when we uh, use C n equal to B minus n, here, okay. so then what will happen? Uh, C n equal to B minus n, this will be equal to sigma n equal to 0 to infinity b n z minus z naught to the power n and then we have c n equal to b minus n. So, b minus n z minus z naught to the power minus n n equal to 1 to infinity. Now, when n runs from 1 to infinity minus n runs from minus infinity to minus 1. So, we can combine this and this series and then we write sigma n equal to minus infinity to infinity b n z minus z naught to the power n. Okay? So, f z can be expressed as sigma n equal to minus infinity to infinity b n z minus z naught to the power n, where b n's are given by 1 over 2 pi i integral over c f w over w minus z naught to the power n plus 1 d w. Okay? So, that is an alternate uh, form of the Laura series. Now, 
let us take z to be any point in the given annulus okay so uh, let us take z to be any point in the given annulus okay let us take z to be any point in the given annulus then by cauchy integral formula okay cause now what we have assumed that the function fz is analytic on c1 analytic on c2 and in the annular region between c1 and c2 so by using the cauchy integral formula we can uh, write uh, fz as 1 over 2 pi i integral over c1 fw over w minus z dw minus integral over c2 fw over w minus z dw what we do th there that we take a cross cut okay we take a cross cut like this and then we move along the cross cut say this is a this is b we move along a b then along c1 in the enter clock by direction then we move along b a and then we move along c2 in the clock by direction total integral is zero i mean then the uh, we can apply the cauchy integral theorem when we apply the cauchy integral theorem it turns out that uh, the integral uh, by cauchy integral formula then fz can be written as 1 over 2 pi i integral over c1 fw over w minus z dw because z will lie inside the simple closed curve which we get by joining the cross cut so uh, fz can be written as 1 over 2 pi i integral over c1 fw dw over w minus z minus integral over c2 fw dw over w minus z and integrals along c1 and c2 are taken in the counter clock by sense okay if you recall what we do there uh, fw over fw over w minus z okay fw over w minus z this function okay is analytic so what we do is uh, since z lies inside c1 the first of these integrals is of the same type uh, the first of this integral is of the same type uh, as integral in equation 2 of the taylor theorem hence proceeding as in the case of taylor series we obtain 1 over 2 pi i integral over c1 fw dw over w minus z equal to sigma n equal to 0 to infinity vn z minus z naught to the power n where vn is given by 1 over 2 pi i integral over c1 fw dw over w minus z naught to the power n plus 1 and the integral is taken in the counter block clock by sense now the point z naught is outside the annulus you can see uh, the point z naught is outside this annular region so uh, the function fj uh, w fw over w minus z naught to the power n plus 1 is analytic in the annulus and hence the path of integration may be replaced by any simple closed curve c lying in the annulus as shown in this figure okay as shown in this figure c1 uh, the integral along c1 can be replaced by uh, integral along any simple closed curve which lies in the uh, region of uh, uh, the uh, annular region uh, as shown in the figure without changing the value of the integral so this proves the formula for this one okay this this formula for bn now in the case of the second integral let us take the second integral now this one okay in the case of the second integral in 3 since z lies outside c2 okay we can see here this point z lies outside c2 so mod of z minus z naught mod of z minus z naught is greater than mod of w minus z naught okay where w belongs to c2 okay w is a is an uh, is a is an is the variable of integration along c2 so if you take a point w here okay mod of w minus z naught is less than mod of z minus z naught so in the case of the second integral since z lies outside c2 we get mod of w minus z naught uh, over z minus z naught less than 1 and therefore 1 over w minus z okay let us again recall that 1 plus q plus q square and so on q to the power n is equal to 1 minus q to the power n plus 1 divided by 1 minus q or we can write it as uh, 1 over 1 minus q equal to 1 plus q plus q square and so on q to the power n plus q to the power n plus 1 divided by 1 minus q okay so where q is uh, mod of q is less than 1 okay so 1 over uh, w minus z is equal to minus 
okay we can write it as uh, 1 over w minus z can be written as 1 plus q plus q square q to the power n you can see here 1 over w minus z i am writing as minus 1 over z minus z naught into 1 over minus w minus z naught over z minus z naught now 1 over 1 minus q this is q okay can be written as 1 plus q plus q square q to the power n and then q to the power n plus 1 upon 1 minus q into z minus z naught so that gives you this one okay q to the power n plus 1 divided by 1 minus q okay uh, that, that gives you how much uh, q is equal to uh, w minus z naught over z minus z naught raised to the power n plus 1 1 over 1 minus w minus z naught over z minus z naught okay that is equal to w minus z naught to the power n plus 1 divided by z minus z naught to the power n plus 1 into z minus z naught divided by z minus w okay so when we multiply by minus 1 over z minus z naught this z minus z naught and this z minus z naught cancel and minus sign makes this w minus z, z uh, my, becomes minus 1 over z minus w w minus z naught over z minus z naught to the power n plus 1 so by using this formula okay we get here now therefore minus 1 over 2 pi i f w over w minus z dw is equal to now from here we can see we multiply uh, we integrate uh, in, integrate over c integrate over c f w d w over w minus z and multiply by 1 over 2 pi i so we come here 1 over 2 pi i 1 over z minus z naught integral over c2 f w d w 1 over z minus z naught whole square integral over c2 w minus z naught into f w d w plus and so on uh, 1 over z minus z naught to the power n plus 1 this term okay and we have integral over c2 w minus z naught to the power n f w d w plus r n star z okay now r n star z is equal to 1 over 2 pi i 1 over z minus z naught to the power n plus 1 from here we are getting okay from this term okay so 1 over 2 pi i into z minus z naught to the power n plus 1 integral over c2 w minus z naught to the power n plus 1 f w d w over w z minus w now in each of these above integrals integral over c2 can be replaced by integral over c because the function is analytic on c2 and in the annular region between c1 and c2 now we know we have to show that rn star goes to 0 as n goes to infinity so what we do is since z lies in the annular region okay you can see z uh, lies in the annular region and w varies on c2 z lies in the annular region and uh, w varies along c2 so z is not equal to w so z is not equal to w f w is analytic in the annular region and also on c2 therefore f w over z minus w is continuous okay along uh, uh, along uh, c2 and so it is bounded and therefore there exists a constant m such that mod of f w over z minus w is less than m for all w uh, on the curves on the circle c2 now let us say l be the length of the circle c2 then mod of rn star z by cauchy inequality let us apply cauchy inequality here rn star z is this one okay uh, 1 over 2 pi i z minus z naught to the power n plus 1 rn star z is equal to 1 over 2 pi i z minus z naught to the power n plus 1 uh, integral over c2 uh, w minus z naught to the power n plus 1 f w d w divided by z minus w okay so mod of r n star z is equal to 1 over 2 pi i 1 over 2 pi sorry 1 over 2 pi mod of z minus z naught to the power n plus 1 and then modulus of integral over c2 uh, w minus z naught to the power n plus 1 f w d w divided by z minus 
w okay now mod of w minus z not uh, f w over z minus w okay this is less than uh, m times mod of this is n plus 1 okay mod of w minus z not to the power n plus 1 okay so hence mod of r n star z is less than 1 by 2 pi okay into m l is the length of c2 uh, then mod of w minus z naught divided by z minus z naught to the power n plus 1 okay so this is what we get mod of r n star z is less than this quantity now mod of w minus z naught over z minus z naught is less than 1 okay it follows that mod of w minus z naught over z minus z naught to the power n plus 1 goes to 0 as n goes to infinity and therefore r n star z goes to 0 as n goes to infinity thus the representation 1 this one okay thus this representation with coefficients b n and c n given by these integrals is established okay now let us prove the convergence of the uh, representation one in the open annulus described in the statement of the theorem that is we can go on continuously increasing the circle of uh, radius of circle uh, c1 and decreasing the radius of circle c2 uh, until we reach a singular point that is the region of convergence so let the sums of the two series be gz and hz respectively let us uh, denote this sum by gz okay so let us take this as gz and this as hz okay so then fz is equal to gz plus hz first series sum we are writing as gz and next series sum we are writing as hz so let the sums of the two series be gz and hz respectively and the radii of c1 and c2 be r1 and r2 then the first series is a power series okay which converges in the annulus and therefore it must converge because the uh, in the first series okay z is any point in the annulus uh, so and it is it's some we are taking as gz since z is any point in the uh, annulus so we can say that first series converges in the annulus now hence it must converge in the entire disk bounded by c1 and the region and the function gz must be analytic in this disk because there is no other similar point inside c1 of the function uh, of this uh, series gz so it must converge in the entire disk uh, bounded by c1 and the function gz must be analytic in this disk now for the other series for the other series uh, uh, hz uh, which whose sum is hz let us take uh, hz is equal to sigma cn z minus z naught to the power minus n n equal to 1 to infinity okay so for the other series let us set zeta equal to 1 over z minus z naught then it becomes a power series in zeta this is uh, if you take zeta equal to 1 over z minus z naught then hz is equal to sigma n equal to 0 to infinity c n zeta to the power n okay so it becomes a power series in zeta the annular region is described by uh, r2 less than mod of z minus z naught less than r1 r1 is the radius of c1 circle r2 is the radius of c2 circle okay so we can say 1 over r1 taking reciprocal here 1 over r1 is less than mod of zeta less than 1 over r2 and the new series converges in this because new series is now this one sigma n equal to 0 to infinity c n zeta to the power n which is a power series and this power series then converges in this region 1 over r1 less than mod of zeta less than 1 over r2 and therefore in the entire disk mod of zeta less than 1 by r2 okay so the second series converges for all z now mod of zeta less than 1 by r2 means mod of z minus z naught greater than r2 so the second series converges for all z such that mod of z minus z naught is greater than r2 and hz is hz is analytic uh, for all these z okay so gz is analytic when mod of z minus z naught is less than r1 okay gz is analytic in the disk mod of z minus z naught less than r1 and hz 
is analytic in mod of z minus z naught greater than R2. Okay. Now, since f is equal to g plus h, it follows that g must be singular at all those points outside C1 where f is singular. Why? Right? Because f is equal, f z is equal to g z plus h z. Okay, uh, g z is analytic for all z in mod of z minus z naught less than R one. Okay, and h z is analytic for all z in uh, mod of z minus z naught greater than greater than r2 so if this is your z naught point okay this is circle c2 and this is circle c1 okay so for all uh, z such that mod of z minus z naught less than r1 hz is analytic inside the uh, circle c1 everywhere and gz is analytic in the uh, circular disk mod of z minus z naught less than r1 and hz is analytic in the uh, in the region outside the disk uh, uh, mod of z minus z naught uh, circular disk mod of z minus z naught less than r equal to r2 so see hz is analytic everywhere here okay so it says that g must be singular at all those points outside c1 where f is singular if f is singular outside c1 okay then g will be singular because c because hz is analytic for all z outside mod of z minus z not equal to c2 okay consequently the first series converges for all z inside the circle about z not whose radius is equal to the distance of that singularity of f outside c1 we can increase this radius of the circle c1 till we reach a singular point of fz that is the distance of the region the circle uh, this radius of c1 can be enlarged so much that the, uh, the radius will be the distance of z0 from the nearest singularity of fz okay so sim similarly the second series converges for all z outside the circle about z0 whose radius is equal to the maximum distance now you can see uh, the second series co co converges for all z okay uh, outside the circle uh, about z not whose radius is equal to the maximum because the wherever the function uh, fz will be uh, singular okay since hz is analytic for all z inside mod of z minus z not greater than r2 so if fz is an, uh, singular inside the uh, disk mod of z minus z not less than uh, r2 then uh, your hz will also be singular there so the second series converges for all z inside the circle about z not whose radius is equal to suppose there are three four points inside the circle c2 at which fz is singular then the you have to take the distance of z not from the farthest singularity which lies inside c2 okay suppose this is the farthest singularity okay uh, so then you have to take the distance of farthest singularity from z not and uh, you can reduce the radius of circle c2 okay you can go on reducing these radius of circle c2 till you reach this point okay uh, which is the farthest point inside the circle c2 from the point z0 so similarly the second series converges for all z outside the circle about z0 whose radius is equal to the maximum distance of the singularities of f inside c2 the domain common to both of those domains of convergence is the open annulus characterized at the end of the theorem which says that we can go on increasing the radius of the circle c1 and go go on decreasing the radius of the circle c2 until we reach a singular point so this completes the proof of the lorentz lorentz theorem now in the lorentz theorem we can notice that if fz is analytic inside c2 okay let us notice this if fz is analytic inside c2 then fz will be analytic inside and on the simple closed curve c okay and therefore this uh, cn okay 
C n is equal to 1 over 2 pi i integral over C w minus z naught to the power n minus 1 f w dw. Now, this is a polynomial in w of degree n minus 1, okay. f w is analytic inside C and on the simple closed curve C, therefore, the product of w minus z naught to the power n minus 1 into f w is analytic inside and on the simple closed curve C and therefore, by the Cauchy integral theorem C n will be equal to 0. So, then what will happen? This uh, uh, part of the uh, Laurent series which contains the uh, negative powers of z minus z naught, it will uh, be 0, it will uh, vanish and therefore, we will have f z equal to sigma n equal to 0 to infinity b n z minus z naught to the power n which is, uh, which is the uh, Taylor series of the function f z. Uh, with center at z equal to z naught. So, if the function f z is analytic inside C 2, then the Laura series reduces to the Taylor series of f z about z equal to z naught. So, this follows uh, the Taylor Lorentz series reduces to Taylor series. Now, furthermore, if f z equal to z naught, now if, if it so happens that uh, this is your z naught say, this is your circle C 2 and this is circle let us say C 1. Okay. If z equal to z naught is the only singularity inside the uh, circle C 2, then we can go on decreasing the radius of T 2 till we reach the point z naught and therefore, the region of convergence of the Laura series will be 0 less than mod of z minus z naught less than r, where r is the distance of z naught from the nearest singularity of f z. Okay. So, where r is the distance of r is the distance of uh, f z uh, naught from the nearest singularity of nearest singularity of f z. Okay. So, if z equal to z naught is the only singular point of f z in the circle C 2, then the lower series expansion converges for all z in this region. Okay. Uh, that is the deleted neighborhood of z equal to z naught. Now, the lower series of a given analytic function in its annulus of convergence is always unique. However, it may have different Laura series in two annuli with the same center. Okay. So, in different uh, annuli with the same center, it can have different Laura series, but in a given annular region, it will have uh, a unique exp uh, expansion. Now, the uniqueness of Laura series is important because Laura series usually are not obtained by evaluating the uh, coefficients b n and c n by the integrals. So, usually Laura series f z of the I mean function f z is not obtained by evaluating the value of b n and c n okay, by these integrals, but by alternate methods. So, there we use the uniqueness of the Laura series. So, if a Laura series is found by any method, any such method okay, where uh, if, you, if you are expanding a function f z uh, with center at z equal to z naught in the form of the Laura series that is it contains positive and negative integral powers of z minus z naught, then it will represent the Laura series of that function in that annular region. Okay. So, if a Laura series is found by any such method, then, uniqueness of, then the uniqueness implies that it must be the Laura series of the given function in the given annulus. For example, let us consider f z equal to 1 over z square into 1 minus z square. Let us see how we find the Laura series of this function. So, we can write it as z square into f z equal to 1 over 1 minus z square. Now, z square into f z is an analytic function. Okay. It is 1 over 1 minus z square, it is analytic everywhere except at uh, uh, I mean analytic except at z equal to plus minus 1, 1 over 1 minus z square can be expanded by uh, Taylor series and this we know this is equal to 1 plus z square plus z to the power 4, z to the power 6 and so on. Okay. And this region of convergence is mod z less than 1. Okay. Now, uh, r we can also write it as sigma n equal to 0 to infinity z to the power 2 n when mod z is less than 1. Now, 
we can write so therefore fz equal to now we divide by 1 over one, multiply by 1 over z square so 1 over z square 1 plus z square plus z to the power 4 z to the power 6 and so on okay so this is equal to 1 by z square plus 1 plus z square plus z to the power 4 and so on and the region of convergence now z equal to 0 has to be excluded because fz is not analytic at z equal to 0 so the region of convergence will be 0 less than mod z less than 1 we can see it like this also say th this function fz is not analytic at z equal to 0 and z equal to plus minus 1 so this is 0 here and 1 is here minus 1 is here okay let us take two concentric circles with center at z equal to 0 okay so the function fz is analytic in the annular region okay and on the circles c1 and c2 this is c1 and c2 we are taking the radius of uh, c1 to be less than 1 okay and c2 to be having uh, radius between 0 and 1 so c1 and c2 are two concentric circles with center at z equal to 0 and in the annular, annular region between them now the lora series uh, the circle uh, c radius of c2 can be uh, go on can we can go on decreasing till we reach the singular point 0 and we can go on increasing the radius of c1 till we reach 1 and minus 1 1 and minus 1 both are at the same uh, distance from 0 that is 1 so the radius of c1 can be made up, uh, as large as 1 and the radius of c2 can be made as small as 0 so we the region of convergence will be 0 less than mod of z less than 1 and we arrive uh, at the series expansion of fz 1 over z square plus 1 plus z square plus z to the power 4 which is of the type uh, 1 okay sigma b n z minus z naught to the power n plus sigma c n z minus z naught to the power n okay so this expansion is of this type where z naught is equal to 0 and therefore this expression this expansion of fz is lora series of fz about z equal to 0 so and region of convergence is 0 less than mod z less than 1 that is the diluted neighborhood of z equal to 0 now let us consider another example fz equal to 1 over 1 minus z square okay so here uh, we need to find all uh, lora series for this function so z e the function fz is not analytic at z equal to 1 and minus 1 okay we want to expand this function with center at z equal to 1 so z equal to 1 so what we will do let us con construct two concentric circles with center at z equal to 1 such that the function is analytic between the uh, uh, in the annular region between c1 and c2 and on the circle c1 and c2 so let us consider one circle like this this is c2 another circle like this c1 okay now we have taken the radius of the circle uh, c1 to be smaller than 2 the distance of 1 from minus 1 is 2 so let us take this radius of c2 c1 to be less than 2 and radius of c2 to be between lying between 0 and 2 okay so then the function fz is analytic in the annular region and on the circles c1 and c2 and uh, then what we can do uh, we can go on decreasing the radius of c2 till we reach a non uh, singular point so we can go on in decreasing the radius of c2 there is no singular point except z equal to 1 okay so the radius of c2 can be made as small as 0 and the radius of c1 can be can be made as large as 2 because we can go on increasing the radius of c1 till we reach the point minus 1 and the distance of minus 1 from 1 is 2 so the radius of convergence in this case will be 0 less than mod of z minus 1 less than 2 what we will do we will write the partial fraction of fz so 1 over 2 times 1 over 1 minus z minus 1 over 1 plus z okay so we can write here plus okay so 1 over 1 minus z plus 1 over 1 plus z will be 
2 over 1 minus z square into 1 by 2. Okay, now, what we do? Uh, let us write let zeta be equal to z minus 1. Okay, then, 0 less than region of convergence will be 0 less than mod of zeta uh, less than 2. Okay, and here z will be equal to zeta plus 1. So, let us put the value here. So, 1 by 2, 1 over 1 minus zeta plus 1 and here we will have 1 over 1 plus zeta plus 1. So, this will be equal to 1 over 2 minus 1 upon zeta. Okay? Minus 1 upon zeta and here we will have 1 by 2 plus zeta. Okay? Now, mod of zeta by 2 okay, is less than 1. Okay? Mod of zeta by 2 is less than 1. So, I can write it as 2 times 1 plus zeta by 2 okay? and then I can write it as minus 1 over 2 zeta plus 1 upon 2 square. Now, this is 1 over 1 plus zeta by 2 where mod of zeta by 2 is less than 1 and therefore, we can expand it by Taylor series. So, this is sigma n equal to 0 to infinity minus 1 to the power n zeta by 2 raised to the power n and then I can put the value of zeta here z minus 1. So, minus 1 upon 2 times z minus 1 plus 1 by 2 square summation n equal to 0 to infinity minus 1 to the power n z minus 1 to the power n divided by 2 to the power n. Okay? And region of convergence is 0 less than mod of z minus 1 less than 2. So, this is the uh, Laura series in the case uh, where uh, we have the region of convergence 0 less than mod of z minus 1 less than 2. Now, let us consider another situation. Okay? In the other situation, what will happen? We can take the circles like this. Suppose, this is 1 and this is minus 1. Okay? Then, you take the inner circle with center at z equal to 1 of radius uh, more than 2. Okay? Uh, let me draw it again. Uh, so, let us draw the circle, inner circle, this is inner circle okay? and this is outer circle. The center is z equal to 1, okay? this is minus 1. Okay? So, we are drawing a circle with center C1 of radius more than 2, okay? this is C2 and this is C1 radius of C2 is uh, greater than 2. Okay? And center is z equal to 1. Okay? So, then what will happen? Uh, we can go on increasing the radius of C1. Since there is no uh, singular point other than 1 and minus 1, the radius of C1 can be made infinity and the radius of C2 can go, we can, uh, we can go on decreasing till we reach the point minus 1 okay? and the distance of minus 1 from 1 is 2. So, we, the, we will have the region of convergence as 2 less than mod of z minus 1. 2 less than mod of z minus 1 less than infinity. Now, let us find the, uh, this is case 2. Okay? This is case 2. So, in this case, if you want to find the Laura series expansion of Fz, then what we will do? Uh, we will again consider zeta equal to z minus 1. Okay? Now, here what will happen? Mod of zeta will be greater than 2. Okay? So, what we will do here? We have Fz equal to fz equal to 1 over 2, 1 over 1 minus z plus 1 over 1 plus z, then we put z equal to uh, zeta plus 1. So, after putting z equal to zeta plus 1, what we have? fz equal to 1 by 2 minus 1 over zeta okay? and then 1 over 2 plus zeta. Okay? We have 2 plus zeta here. Right? So, what we do? Uh, now, this is 2 by mod of zeta less than 1. Okay? mod of zeta greater than 2 gives you 2 by mod of zeta less than 1. So, what we do here 1 by 2 minus 1 by zeta and then we have plus 1 by zeta 
1 plus 2 by zeta ok. So, uh, then we shall expand this by this is equal to 1 by 2 minus 1 upon zeta plus 1 by zeta sigma n equal to 0 to infinity uh, minus 1 to the power n and 2 by zeta to the power n ok. So, when you put n equal to 0 here what will happen we will get uh, minus 1 to the power 0 which is 1 2 by zeta to the power 0 which is 1. Uh, so, 1 by zeta we will get. So, first term will cancel with minus 1 by zeta here. So, we shall write 1 over 2 times uh, sigma n equal to 1 to infinity minus 1 to the power n 2 to the power n divided by zeta to the power n plus 1 ok. So, 1 by 2 I have written outside. So, 1 by 2 ok sigma n equal to 1 to infinity minus 1 to the power n 2 to the power n upon zeta to the power n into 1 by zeta. So, zeta to the power n plus 1 and then we put zeta equal to uh, your z minus 1. So, we will get f z equal to. So, in the second case uh, f z equal to we will get f z equal to 1 by 2 uh, sigma n equal to 0 1 to infinity minus 1 to the power n 2 to the power n upon z minus 2 to the power n plus 1. This is uh, the Laura series when 2 is less than mod of z minus 1 less than infinity. So, we have discussed uh, both the cases which are possible in the case of f z equal to 1 over 1 minus z square. We have two different annuli one annuli is 0 less than mod z minus 1 less than 2 where we get this series expansion this Laura series and we have another uh, case where the annular region is 2 less than mod of z minus 1 less than infinity and there we get this uh, Laura series. So, in different annuli f z may have different uh, Laura series, but in, uh, in, a, in a given uh, annular region f z has a unique Laura series. Uh, so, that that uh, uniqueness of Laura series be used to find the Laura series expansion of f z in a given annular region. We, as we said we do not find the uh, coefficients b n and c n usually uh, we uh, use alternate methods to determine the Laura series expansion of f z in a given annular region of convergence by implying some other methods. With this I would like to end my lecture. Thank you very much for your attention.